Okay, so um, hello there. I'm Kanji, and this is my uh, draw with me process. So yeah, um, this is gonna be just a chill, uh, podcasty type of draw with me that has very very little bit of an explanation on how I draw. So um, yeah, this is gonna be my digital art process, but just don't expect anything from me to be quite honest this is not gonna be a tutorial and my art process is really chaotic so yeah that's just just a disclaimer so yeah it's literally over uh, all over the place uh, uh, yeah and I don't have a script uh, this is just I have bullet points on what I would talk about for this uh, video however I really don't have anything with me aside from that uh, so yeah just bear with me um, not the best at this and I'm not a professional artist air with air quotes I still you know I actually still do this professionally as I could I, as I do commissions but I'm not like the professional professional type you know uh, so yeah, I also don't do YouTube full time. So if in any way this video is not really is not really up to your standards, that's fine. Whatever. I also got a new editing software, so I got to try DaVinci Resolve finally. So it's it's been a it's been a minute since I heard about it, uh, and I wanted to try it. I heard it from Jasa and I wanted to try it so bad but uh, the minute I uh, installed the software it's just so so difficult to understand so I watched a bunch of tutorials and you know uh, made this one so if it's it, it's a bit wonky <laughs> That's probably why I'm not really good at this. Anyway, so yeah, this is just a speed painting or something like that. Uh, podcasty type long video. Uh, yeah, so actually we <laughs> we already uh, moved past to the very rough sketch. So I'm just gonna introduce to you who I'm drawing right now. So from the title. I am drawing Lockwood and Co. So this is going to be Anthony Lockwood and Lucy Carlyle. So I thought about this because of how cute their dynamic is. It's just it's just so cute. I thought of like Anthony just sitting and teasing Lucy Carlyle. It's just so it's just so cute. So it's it's been a long time since I uh, watch a series from Netflix that uh, it didn't like it didn't wow me like it's a great great uh, series it wasn't like that I was just I enjoyed it as it is and I think that's uh, that's what of the most important uh, to me when I'm watching a series also the Wednesday one really really good i did like a lot of pieces from that i i did three pieces from wednesday and yeah i didn't make a video that's that's me you know uh anyway so yeah i, re I really like the series and i wanted to uh read the book uh but yeah i didn't still anyway i i did this so uh i hopefully i got to read the the book uh sometime this year so yeah uh for sketching <laughs> we were like sidetracked <laughs> okay anyway so for sketching yeah uh, i do a lot of uh rough sketch for lucy carlyle uh, it looked it took me like two hours to find a really good sketch for her or a really good pose rather uh than anthony anthony took me like about just uh, less than 15 minutes I think it's it was way too easy to do his pose while Lucy was like so it 
took me so long that uh, I got really annoyed that I didn't want to finish it already or and just scrap the idea like all the concept that I thought about the composition everything and scrap that but I didn't you know when I found uh, the perfect sitting post for her post per for her I was like yeah I think it will work out so I initially wanted her to stand and was kind of leaning to Anthony so in the uh, sh- he is holding a newspaper and I want Lucy to lean to Anthony kind of like uh, a uh, air quotes uh, romantic uh, scene or something like that cute just cute uh, wholesome scene um, but yeah I scrapped that and I want her to be a bit more on the annoyed side uh, and cause Anthony was teasing her in this in this uh, concept so I want her to be like kinda annoyed to Anthony but whatever so yeah uh, I do a lot of rough sketching uh, when I sketch uh, usually I do rough sketch in a really really small uh, like it's kind of thumb uh, it's kind of thumbnails so if you know thumbnails artists do this uh, I actually don't do that but yeah uh, it's kind of similar to that and the reason for that is because I'm not really confident with my uh, drafting skills so I hate sketching it's it's literally the most hated uh, art process for me so I really hate sketching so um, I draft really really small so that i i don't commit to anything to any lines at all and just you know go with the flow and draw hopefully i uh, i'm more relaxed in the next uh next drawings that i have but this one i'm not really relaxed at all i was struggling a lot with uh lucy carlyle's pose anyway so yeah uh, I draft really small, about 5 to 10% of the canvas size, smaller than that probably. And then I ju- when I see a really good, uh, really good pose or uh, I've done it already, the full sketch, I fit it to canvas. So like it, it really took me a long time to uh, edit this video, this first part because of that. So I have to zoom crop and transform the video because it's really small and you can't see it if it's if i have the whole canvas here you will not see it uh so i had to zoom in and crop the video itself and transform it and you can do that everything in da vinci so yeah so now moving on to uh moving on to line art so uh i'm gonna mention my brushes uh the brushes that i use are really uh still the brushes that i used like long long time ago uh since i got this ipad um so i use procreate default airbrush for uh airbrush the medium hard brush for sketching uh like a long while back and then when jazza released his uh ultimate digital brushes i got that and i use uh his pencil firm or pencil standard when i sketch now so when i you when i want to sketch smaller i still use the airbrush but in general i just use uh jazz as ultimate uh brush pencil firm and standard and then for uh, for inking uh i just use uh procreate default brush the derwent one uh that is for uh the sketching the derwent one so uh that's what i use when i do sketch commissions however i don't use it that much now if i do use it that's uh that's there so i still want to mention it uh and then i have for a really long time i have the fat 
pencil it's called the fat pencil and i downloaded it for free i, for- I forgot where i got it but yeah uh and then this is what i use now the essential max packs uh max pack max u brainstorm detail and then i use the co- i use a custom one uh for line art so this one is for filling colors the detail which is the original one and then the custom is usually for my line art so that's what i'm using right now um so yeah uh uh i don't i rarely uh i rarely change uh brushes the the real reason for that is because i it's difficult for me to get used to a brush and I have a very specific uh, feel when I when I use a brush I want it to be uh, a little bit chalky and have a lot of texture to it and also soft like it's not harsh lines and the reason for that is because I actually hate line art so not as much as I hate sketching but line art is up there so as you can see uh, I use uh, blue for sketching so by the way if you uh, sketch with black or anything that is too dark don't do that just pick a colorful light uh, color uh, anyway so yeah I use uh, really light blue for uh, sketching and then I use a red one for line art and the reason for that is again I hate 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 line art and I don't like uh, black ink I just don't like the black ink and the harshness of it Um, good for a lot of artists that do inking and harsh black lines I really salute them and they do it so good that I sometimes get jealous that I want to do that as well but when I do that it's it's it looks awful I hate it so much it's just not really in my style so yeah I use a very chalky brush and just light with a lot of with a lot of uh, texture so that's that uh, max you brainstorm uh, which i customed because the the initial one the original from the max pack uh, is a bit uh, too too crispy crispy too crisp for my uh, for my taste so again i rarely uh, change my brush so uh, back then i used krita for my uh, art software and then when i switched to procreate i kind of didn't use it for like a month or so because i was so attached to my old brush and in, in krita i think it was a charcoal brush uh the foot just the foot brush from krita a charcoal 6b i probably forgot it now it, that may be wrong but it was a charcoal brush and it's so good uh, and then I use it for everything, for coloring, for uh, line art, for background, everything. That's also what. Uh, that's also how I use the current brush that I'm using. I use it for everything. But yeah, uh, it took me a long time to move on from that brush. Then I got to Procreate, and then I checked all the brushes. Doesn't have anything similar to that, so I downloaded downloaded a very uh a lot of other brushes to be quite honest i searched like a lot of brushes that are for free in uh in in the internet and then i I found one called fat pencil which i or i guess um won't be uh won't be seeing the light to other artists because i really don't remember where i got it from but yeah uh, when I got it, uh, I was so happy. Used it for a long time, and then uh, I got a lot, of, a little bit of money, and bought uh, Essential Max Pack, which is quite popular with a lot of artists. So when I used it, uh, this brush, I was so, so, so surprised, and I want to use it immediately. However, like I said, it's not. Uh, it's not like 
100, 100% to my taste so I still custom it and now I'm so attached to it that uh, I still got a new brush I forgot from what artist from who but uh, they have an inky pack set of brush and it's so good and it's quite similar actually to this brush however I didn't use it because I'm attached to this to this brush and it works perfectly it's it's 100 percent what I want and that brush is a little bit crisp but uh, it's a lot more chalky so I, I'm kind of like I should use that in a different artwork maybe uh, next time anyway so yeah um, moving on uh, to coloring so I have few bullet points for coloring because it's, this is the long longest part of this digital art process so uh, Mm, as mentioned, uh, this this uh, this is going to be a chaotic uh, digital art process. Uh, you, you don't. I really don't follow uh, an order like just a specific order like sketch, then line art, then coloring. But overall, don't really follow anything that much. So like uh, uh, like what's happening right here. So I'm coloring uh, Lucy Carlisle and I was like, it's so awful, it's so ugly, it's just so ugly, I want to change it so bad that I did, and yeah, uh, I was so happy that I did because of how it turned out, so yeah, I'm sketching right now again, it's just so bad it's just so much better than the previous one that i i swear i swear that uh i would have regretted it so much if i continue with the old uh old one so yeah uh i'm the type of artist that will really uh really get discouraged if something is not working out to benefit the drawing like again the, the old Lucy Carlyle uh, face it wasn't working for me and it, it looks so ugly it's just so ugly it's so awful that uh, I postponed this artwork for like a week I didn't want to finish it at all even though Anthony Anthony Lockwood turned out so good and I loved that face so much but it's not working for me because of the Lucy Carter face, Carlisle face. So I was like, let's just do it. I don't want to get discouraged and I want to finish this drawing because it looks so good. The composition is great. The concept is great. And the script that I made earlier is good. And it's a bit funny and wholesome. I want to do it. And I did. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's okay to redo this kind of stop in your drawing however uh you need to learn when to stop redoing so you can't just you know if you see a small mistake redo it again small mistake redo it again you can't do that of course okay you need to move on with your piece and let go so that's again <laughs> i've been i've been men mentioning him for like in this video for like three times already so again i learned this from jazza so i think he mentioned this a lot already in his uh in his channel that uh he always learns to let go of his uh of the videos that he makes so once he uploads the video he already let go like a uh, few weeks or days ago and he is already excited for another uh, art project or new project that he is working on. So you need to let go and get excited to the new project that you will be working on. Uh, you have to do that with your artwork. Always do that. Okay, so yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, um, I'm going to mention how I color. So how I color, I usually start with the skin. So as you can see, I start uh, started with the skin already. And then I follow with whatever's closer, like her hair or like their hair or the clothes. So 
yeah like i said it this is really chaotic like i said and then followed by the rest you know uh whatever's closer again like for clothes whatever's closer will be the pants or whatever yeah it's just how my brain works i guess whatever uh, that's how i usually start that sometimes when i finish the face or the skin um not the skin i mean the, just the face so when i finish the face uh since i started the skin uh the face and then move on to the hair like sometimes i forgot the i forget about the uh, other skin parts like the hands or uh so yeah <laughs> it's really chaotic sometimes uh my previous artworks uh i started out the face then the hair and then the clothes then when i finished it i saw that i haven't finished the hands and the uh the the feet like oh damn i should have finished that first because i already finished the face so yeah um uh, actually i should mention that uh, i followed quickly alpaca's uh video on her digital art process but yeah like i said i'm not gonna be as organized as her video and not as profound as her as well so she mentioned some tutorials i'm not gonna do that <laughs> Anyway, so again for the coloring. Uh, aside from that, uh, yeah, uh, I do shadows first. So I think uh, traditional artists, since I used to be a traditional artist, um, I did uh, uh, light first and then some mid shadows, and then uh, I go to the highlights. So usually uh you need to uh do your highlights first when doing traditional so back then i usually start at the lightest or the mid tone and then just erase a bit for the lighter tones uh, so i kind of uh didn't follow that when i went digital i go for digital with the mid tones and then i go to um immediately go to the shadows and then darker and darker until i get to the highlights so the last thing i color are the highlights um also when i do shadows and other tones in my drawing i usually just keep it at like three or four probably max is gonna be five when i have lighting effects so like initial shadow and then i have another shadow and then i sometimes have this called you know uh uh for value like the the part on anthony's uh pants the under uh under part of the pants so that is not a shadow but that is for color values uh so i used a lighter blue for that lighter blue unsaturated blue that is lighter than the uh darker darkest shade of the pants so it's kind of hard to <laughs> explain that to be quite honest with you um so yeah and then for skin uh i think uh we already moved past that but yeah the skin i usually have a subscatter that will change a lot in your drawing so uh it's again it's not a tutorial but you have to uh learn that it will change a lot in your drawing subscatter is amazing so that is actually after either after the multiply layer or the uh the highlight so you you use a reddish light reddish tone for uh, light skinned people and then for dark skinned people i usually use orange something like that that is for uh just to show that uh there's flesh underneath uh there's flesh underneath the skin like blood pumping in those you know whatever but yeah uh so yeah uh aside from that how i organize layers uh 
it's kind of difficult to explain everything but the uh, the main thing I do is I alpha lock the layers and then I sometimes uh, do different layers for uh, since I have different layers for line arts sometimes it's because I change the color of the line arts later on uh, I separate the colors when they're different and when are when they are side by side so if they're side by side I change a layer or I add a layer and then if they are not side by side or not close to each other I usually merge that to save layers as you know in uh, Procreate you have limited layers based on your canvas size so I have to save space uh, so not save space save layers in order to have more layers for other uh, more important things like rendering later on I have to duplicate all the let the layers and then uh, paint over that so yeah and then how I choose a palette uh, I uh, I take uh, I take palettes from other artists actually and the reason for that is because no one owns palettes color palettes so I think this is a controversial take if you think that it, this is a controversial take you have to comment down your arguments but please don't comment me I honestly think that color palettes are not owned by anyone and I can use color palettes from other artists and still have an original idea like this one uh, I usually uh, pick color from my favorite artist all-time favorite artist number one favorite artist of just everyone hands down they are my favorite artist so I pick color from them cuddly videos i'm going to link down all the artists that i am mentioning and hope and probably some of the brushes that i mentioned as well so like i said i forgot majority of them anyway yeah uh, i pick color from that artist from my favorite artist and and of course when i pick layer it's just a base color to be quite honest i still change uh change a lot um, from that like I pick color and then I use that as a base and sometimes I adjust so uh, I'm an artist that heavily relies on uh, the digital aspect of digital art like all the advantage of digital art especially especially the changing uh, adjustment so the hue saturation brightness color value uh, etc so uh, I, re uh, I really try my best to utilize all of that uh, settings so overall my palette is on the warmer side instead of the uh, cooler side and there's no particular reason for that I just really like warmer tones and my favorite color is red <laughs> that is a weird uh, TMI but yeah uh, I just really like a warmer side, uh, warmer colors for my drawings. Uh, also, I rarely use blending modes. Uh, blending modes or layer effects, I rarely, rarely use them unless I use, I have a mood or I have a lighting, uh, dramatic lighting. And the reason for that is because I actually discovered. Uh, discovered layer effects like uh, late in my digital art journey so i started digital art in uh i think 20 uh, yeah 2019 i started and then i discovered that like late 20 um not late 2020 but like early 2020 i discovered that the the layer effects function and then i literally did like 10 to 20 layers of just layer effects it was the artwork is so muddy that it made me think not again never again so yeah uh, 
now I just use it when necessary and usually when I have two color in a uh, two colors in a one layer so like uh, Lucy Carlyle's jacket here so it's a two color jacket I use multiply for that because of that so it's easier to do a shadow for that uh, also yeah uh, I hate using color black so as much as possible I don't use anything black on my uh, on my art uh, if you if you color pick my art uh, you will see how how much I avoid using all black colors uh, even my line art so uh, we're now actually on the rendering phase so for the rendering phase I first thing I do is I change the line art color so I match the line art to the uh, so you have your dark darkest shadow and then I darken that a little bit more in order to find the color of the line art that it that will suit that specific part of the uh, the line art uh, I color again I color the line art it, the reason for that is because I just hate seeing the line art I don't like line art I usually blend that within the drawing so yeah uh, after this I will duplicate all the layers and then merge all of them merge all of them and then paint over the line art uh, sometimes I just keep the line art because it looks good uh, as long as the line art is almost the same color as the as where it is so I, I just don't like seeing the line art like so prominent in the drawing so if it's not that prominent that's okay if it is prominent I am going to color that over when I uh, merge them all so where I am where am I now uh, I'm still not <laughs> yet done with the I think I'm rendering right now with the uh, no, with my Lucy Carlyle, Lucy Carlyle and Anthony Lockwood. So I'm gonna start with the chair. So the chair is really difficult. That really took me a long, not not really a long time, but longer time that I expected m myself to finish. So yeah, mm. uh, when I started this uh, this drawing, since I have a few more few more minutes to talk about this drawing since uh, I'm already done I'm just doing the chair now not really <laughs> I already uh, mentioned a lot of things already with my drawing proce process the last is actually uh, the last thing that I do when when finishing a piece or rendering phase is I do a noise filter so noise filter at multi channel i don't know if that's how you call it but in multi and at max turbulence and then i up the scale uh about five to ten percent um uh opacity for this drawing i think i did a six percent opacity uh yeah uh the reason for that actually some artists used it so that uh, <laughs> so that art the other artists can't uh, can't how do you say this they can't remove the watermark so for me I'm actually the type of artist that hate putting watermark on my drawings and also I hate uh, putting my signature I used to uh, used to have a signature that is so big and then I changed it to a lot smaller and then I when I did digital art I came across the opacity uh, setting and then I just turned it like at 5% opacity when no one can see it I just hate putting my signatures and then I'm now Nowadays, uh, I have a signature that, that just says my name, Lee Kanji. So, uh, it doesn't 
really stick out a lot and it doesn't annoy me anymore i still change it the, the opacity about 30 percent so uh it's higher than what i used to do uh but yeah uh i used to hate it i still hate it um i have a lot of hate but yeah uh i guess that's just the thing you know oh and, and by the way don't forget flipping your canvas when you're drawing even even if you are already in the uh coloring phase don't forget to flip your canvas okay okay so where was i what was i going to say again so i have a few minutes to talk about this drawing and i guess some updates about my life so this drawing uh uh it took me a long time even though I already have a perfect concept and a perfect composition and like I said uh, that is because of Lucy Carlyle's face however it turned out really good now I'm so proud of it probably the, the proudest uh, artwork yet uh, always the proudest <laughs> with my artwork uh, uh, I guess it's a good, uh, it's a good, uh, how do you say this? It's a good uh, attitude towards drawing. So, a lot of people uh, have told me that I've improved a lot in the past few years, but I don't really see it that much unless I uh, put my old drawing and my newest or recent drawing together. And that always keeps me motivated to draw again and again. So if you feel some, if you sometimes feel like that, just put your earliest drawings and your recent drawing, put them together, and then see how much you improved. Yeah, I didn't mean to be inspirational about this. I just wanted to boast how good I am at drawing. Um, again <laughs> again i'm not the best but but i think every, um, but i think right now uh, i'm i'm quite okay with it uh, finally you know uh so yeah uh, i'm almost finished i struggled a lot with this so uh, i'm not the type of artist that does grayscale oh and the reason for that is like i said i hate sketching i hate line art of course i love coloring so because of that i'm not i don't really see my values that much so some artists start their drawing in a black and white or gray scale so i don't like that because again i hate black in my drawings so uh, if you know me in real life though i love black all of my things are black but in my drawing i love it to be colorful it's so colorful just just look at my instagram feed it's so colorful it's so colorful so i love colors in my drawings and i don't I usually don't check my color values that are uh, not color values my just values in general so my values I don't usually check that and then this part of the chair the green one right now that took me a long time to pick a good color and I still think that color is not right but it helps my values for that part of the drawing to keep your eye on Anthony and not that part on the chair so uh, and also to keep them separate uh, it's it's hard to it's hard to pick a darker color for that because if you pick a darker color for that the pants of Anthony won't stand out so you have to pick a somewhat uh, unsaturated uh, grayish uh, color and I pick a green grayish color unsaturated and a bit lighter compared to the uh, compared to the pants of Anthony and I think it worked out better uh, however it's still not the best color that should have been used 
so I could have picked a better color but I was like yeah it, it's it's good it looks good already um, I think it's better to let it go now it's finished and uh, I didn't think anything about it at all already I'm done with it and I was so happy with the uh, with the outcome that it didn't bother me even though uh, it's it still bothers me like even right now so like I said you need to learn what to let go and what to stop redoing okay so yeah I think we are already finished with this uh, with this uh, voiceover so yeah okay this is time to wrap up now and yeah I hope you like the video uh, it's my second time uh, doing a voice over here on YouTube and I'm not really still good at it <laughs> and now I'm trying to do a podcast type of videos uh, but yeah whatever um, I hope you like the different uh, video angles or how do you call that but video type so I have a I have a video with my hands I have a speed paint type from Procreate and a speed uh, speed paint from uh, from the OBS so I hope you like that so different kinds of video um, and then uh, I edited it a little bit with more effort this time I used to just do it on my phone um, and then this voiceover I hope you are okay with my voice if not then just you know get out of here I don't really care uh, I don't do YouTube full time I just do it whenever I want to and when I have a good artwork to show so I don't really need an audience to be quite honest I've been doing twitch recently and no one watches me I just really like talking to myself so yeah um, but still if you like this one if you like my video hope you stay and hope you stay for another video I don't know when that will be though <laughs> yeah hopefully uh, soon I'm working on a big project and I hope uh, I can make a video out of it so yeah bye guys <laughs>